Hey everyone, welcome to the Wilson Homestead. So I'm standing here in front of my vegetable garden. I'm getting ready to pick a bunch of tomatoes and I thought that maybe you would like to come along with me. I also have some sunflowers and some cool stuff to show you. So let's go in here and see what is going on. Look at these gorgeous sunflowers right here at the entrance and some dahlias, but look at this arch. I just love this. Um, this is mostly Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans, but I just love walking underneath of this. And then you see all of these beans hanging down that I need to harvest. <laughs> and also, right over here, I am growing a python snake bean, which I think is actually in the gourd family, but it has bloomed some, and see there's a bud right there, but I'm not getting any beans on it, so I was really hoping to have some of those hanging down off of this trellis too, and that plant has found its way all the way over here. Also, here on the end of this trellis, I have winged beans, and they're not doing much. Like, they've been growing forever, but, oh my gosh, right there, right there's a bean. I didn't even see that. Well, they're doing something, but what the heck is that? I think it's just a leaf or something, but, oh, that's cool. Are there any more that I haven't seen? Of course, I've got my garden buddy in here with me. Um, these plants don't look very healthy. They're getting some kind of blight or something on them. But hopefully I can get a couple winged beans off of them. But this trellis is just magical. I just love standing underneath of it. It's so cool. Especially over there in the front where all of that stuff is hanging down. Like, these Kentucky Wonder Pole Beans just go to town on this trellis. So I usually plant some of them every year. Have some beautiful dahlias here at the end of the trellis. These are double extreme mix dahlias. Um, I grew them from seed. Can you believe this humongous plant came from one tiny little seed that I planted probably in... March, I would say, is whenever I started these. But these are some gorgeous flowers. Got a pretty yellow one over here. I need to cut some of these and take them inside. I restarted some cucumbers in this bed. And, I mean, look how heavy the weed pressure is in here. It's ridiculous. Um, this is where I had my garlic planted before, but my early crop of cucumbers did nothing. I mean, they didn't produce a whole lot, and what they did produce was very bitter, so I didn't get to make any pickles yet. So I'm hoping that I have enough time for these cucumber plants to crank out some cucumbers for me so I can at least make a few jars of pickles. I am almost out. I think we're on the last jar now in the house that I had preserved from last year, so we'll see. Right at the end of this bed, I have some beautiful gomfrina. I love this plant. I just grew it for the first time last year, and I loved it so much that this will be in my garden every single year. And I have noticed whenever I do plant it out in my landscape around my house, the deer leave this plant alone. So that is a plus. But we've got some fuchsia ones, some pink ones, and some white ones. And I just love them. Like they um, start off a little slow. But whenever fall starts getting closer, I mean, these come into their own big time. Now let's take a look at some of these sunflowers. These are so stinking cute. 
these are teddy bear sunflowers and I just love them they're about maybe two feet tall and see this one looks real poofy and this one is not that way so I don't know what happened there maybe they fill out eventually I don't know we'll see but I just think that is the cutest thing and then in this bed I've got this great big tall sunflower these were called autumn beauty I think we've got some of the bright yellow ones and this one right here is like a bronze collar let me see if I can go over a row to get a better angle of this so you can see it just look at that beauty gorgeous I really like that one definitely saving seeds from that okay let's talk about tomatoes this entire row of tomatoes sucked this year um, I had three Thorburns terracotta tomatoes up here and you can kind of see the collar on these they're I mean they're just not any good because the plants got sick really fast um, I picked a few of them earlier in the season and they were okay um, the flavor didn't blow my mind or anything but these plants just got sick faster than any other tomato plant that I grew this year so I mean I'm I will probably give them another chance because I don't know if there was something going on in this bed I had tomatoes here last year too and my garden isn't really big enough to rotate everything every year, so, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna have to deal with some crap every now and then. But, okay, one, two, three, that was Thorburn's Terracotta, and then I had three Anonis Noir, and I think they also call this one Black Pineapple, and again, very sickly, but the flavor of the Anonis Noir is amazing. It was our favorite tomato out of the garden this year. And I still have a green one right there that I hope will get ripe and I can eat it because they are delicious. And then down here on the end I have two Paul Robeson. really nice um, I actually grew these for the first time last year and I had them in a spot where they weren't happy at all um, but this year they did a lot better and the flavor on these are amazing too so I don't feel quite as bad about the Paul Robeson as I did last year oh look at that a bird shit on there but you know I like dark tomatoes and tomatoes that have a complex flavor and this one does it for me the elephant ears that I put down here are really going to town <laughs> they are huge see if I can get a shot of the, how big these are Look at that thing. I've never grown these out of containers before, but they really love it in a raised bed, let me tell you. My corn is very weedy, but I do think that I'm going to get some because we've got little baby ears everywhere. And like half of it's laying down there in the middle. And I don't know if you can see down there on the end, but there's a couple pretty big ears down there. And look, I mean, just look at these weeds. This is ridiculous. I need to take better care of my garden. I say that every year, but it never really happens. Um, I have some melons in this bed. I have, uh, I can't remember what the name of this one is. Charon, I always say it wrong. Charonte, I think is how you say it. And it's like a, a cantaloupe, but you can see I have a, little melon right there maybe just that one 
<laughs> but yeah, the, like these beds are just a, a weedy mess. Oh, look, there's another one. There's another one. And then up on this end, I have sugar baby watermelons. And I really hope that I don't step on any critters in here while I'm walking through these weeds. But I have a pretty good size sugar baby watermelon right here. And I saw another one somewhere. Where was it? I'm thinking that it was up in here somewhere. Maybe not. Oh, there's a little baby one right there, but I don't think that one will have enough time to grow. But at least I'll have one. <laughs> I planted a yellow doll watermelon in here too, but none of them made it. I don't even think they germinated, actually. So I don't know if the seed was bad or what happened. But if I get at least a few melons out of here, I'll be happy. This is my pepper bed. Um, there's actually a jalapeno pepper down there. Um, I saved seeds from a hybrid last year, which that doesn't always work out. It might be hot, but anyway, it was um, full Jew jalapeno, which looks like a jalapeno, but isn't hot. But there is a pepper down here that I'm actually going to harvest and try on camera to see if it's hot or not. See right there, there's a couple of them in there. Um, I don't do well with spicy foods, so if that thing is spicy, you will get to see me lit on fire. <laughs> but the bell peppers are starting to do pretty good. Man, this one needs staked. It's hanging down. Look at this one. That's a pretty good size one too. I like to wait until they turn color though because the flavor is so much sweeter. I have more gonfrina up here. Some pretty cosmos. Now for some more tomatoes. You can see I've got quite a few in this row that I need to pick. These first three plants are purple bumblebee. And this plant here, this first one, it, it has been like a dwarf plant the entire time. Way smaller than the other two plants. And it's got these little baby tiny little cherry tomatoes on there. And then these two purple bumblebees, we've got some of the, like this size right here is what purple bumblebee I think is supposed to look like. But I've got a bunch of like bigger ones on this plant. Look at that. Um, these are a pretty tasty variety. Um, I bought them because I thought that the flavor would be maybe close to black cherry, but they're not, but they're still a good cherry tomato. And I have found that they don't split a whole lot. They do a little bit, but not too bad. All right, what's going on? What are you doing? <laughs> Next up, I have three Parks Whopper tomatoes. This is a hybrid tomato. Um, you can see that they are diseased somewhat, but the tops are still very green and looking pretty healthy. So I'm happy with that. I have pulled, I think, two tomatoes off of these so far. These were very far behind. I don't think that I started these plants until like the end of April. But it's nice to have a few plants that are kind of behind the other ones. So that way you're not getting all of your big tomatoes at one time. I have so many tomatoes on here that need harvested. I'm probably going to take this one too because it's blushing enough that I can just take it inside. And it will finish ripening on the counter. But you can see all of these red tomatoes. But look, look at all of the green ones that are still left on here. And I'm sure that those will have enough time to ripen before we start getting any frost. Now down here we have a couple triple crop plants and I can tell you right now that I am so excited 
to pick this massive thing right here. Now this plant, <laughs> I think only has that one big ass tomato on it. But, I mean, this is going to be worth it. I have to weigh this thing. Like, it has to be close to two pounds. Has to be. So, let's harvest that one. And whenever we leave the garden, I will go up to the house and weigh that one so you can see how much it weighs. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. <laughs> okay. Now for something really exciting. Um, I have three, no two, two plants here that are called Chef's Choice Bicolor. This is a hybrid plant. And I, this is the biggest tomato in my garden this year. This is huge, probably the biggest tomato I have ever grown in my life. So I hope that it ripens up nicely does not get rotten all of that good stuff so say a little prayer for my big old tomato right there I've got one here that's blushing enough that I'm gonna go ahead and pick it and I also have another really nice one right here both of those are big tomatoes Alright, I've got to be very careful getting this one because if I would cut that great big giant one off of there right now, I would be so upset. Oh yeah. So, like I said, Chef's Choice by Collar. And these are some very nice tomatoes. Look, a belly button. Okay, next up, this is a variety that I have never grown before. This is called Pink Brandywine Sudeth Strain. This was recommended to me by a viewer, and it's supposed to taste really good, so I'm excited to try one. I haven't got any ripe ones off of this plant yet, but you can see I have a ripe one right there. Now this one, you can tell by the leaves that it's a potato leaf variety and also very sick. Every tomato plant that you see in this whole video is gonna be sick because there's just no way around blight in my climate. Now hopefully one day in the future, I will have a greenhouse that I can grow tomatoes in undercover where they're not getting rained on constantly. But this has been a year full of rain, so this happens blight happens, leaf spot happens, whenever your climate is that wet and damp all the time. But we are going to harvest this tomato right here and then we will move on to the next variety. Oh, almost dropped it. And that is a good sized tomato too. Not as huge as the other ones, but still very nice. And I am really excited to try this one out. This is the last pink brandy one. And look, I've got beans growing up around this tomato. I need to harvest those. Those beans are a yellow bean, a wax bean. But I don't remember what variety I planted there. I planted pencil pod beans. And I planted, I think, gold rush. Um, so I, it's one of those, probably. <laughs> All right, the last three tomato plants in this row are Aunt Ruby's German Green. And I think that I really need to work on my soil in these beds because this entire big ass tomato plant right here doesn't even have one tomato on it. So this area needs some work and this area needs some work because these two plants only have a few tomatoes on it. You can see I've got a pretty nice one down here and then I have two nice ones down here. Um, these are actually ready to be picked. 
Now these green tomatoes can be a little tricky to know when to harvest because they stay green. Oh no, the bugs got into this one because it split. Uh, that is such a bummer. Oh well, what are you going to do? Go ahead and pick that one too. It's not quite ripe, but it will ripen on the counter. Uh, that is just making me sick right now. I see where it split and then the bugs got in. I can probably cut this off right here and still eat the rest of this tonight. Uh, I hate that because I didn't hardly have any of these tomatoes. Okay, so this one right here is just starting to give a little. You can see it's got some cat facing on it, but it will still taste good after it's ripened. We can just cut that piece out, and then this great big one that I've been so excited for for so long. You can see that these green ones, well, this variety, Aunt Ruby's German Green, it will start to get a little bit of pink streaking right here on the bottom. But usually I just go around and just, you know, lightly squeeze these to see if they're ripe or not. Once you have been growing tomatoes for long enough, you know what a ripe tomato feels like. Um, these green ones just take a little bit more attention because, you know, you're not going to see something red sitting there when it's ready to be picked. But yeah, freaking bummer right there. Ugh makes me sick oh well on to the next okay now these <laughs> three tomatoes right here were supposed to be uh, chef choice black but obviously I got some tags mixed up and I put a white cherry here and but here's the chef choice black this is a hybrid too and I really thought that they would be more vigorous than this little life right there left in it a little bit there but the rest is pretty much dead um, this tomato is a dark tomato and look there's stink bugs everywhere um, I, I tend to like dark tomatoes a lot because they have a more complex flavor this one the flavor of it reminds me a lot of like a black creme um, more on the bland side of the dark tomatoes, which all the dark tomatoes are good, but this is more on the bland side of things than like Paul Robeson or Cherokee Purple. And next up is my favorite of all time cherry tomato, black cherry. The plants are, again, very sick. But these are so good. I love these tomatoes. And you can see um, the, the stink bugs, whenever they get on these tomato plants, I have had a lot of fruit that looks like this. See all that mottling right there? Like they suck the juice out of them. stupid stink bugs but I have quite a few of these tomatoes to pick and you can see some of them have been ravaged by the stink bugs but a lot of them are still good so I suppose I can share a few with the little stinkers now down here and these plants I'm surprised they are still looking so good these are white cherries, again. <laughs> really good flavor. Look, stink bug right there on that one. Grr. Um, I was actually shocked that I like the flavor of these white cherries because I grew a great white tomato before and I thought it was pretty bland, but these white cherry tomatoes actually taste really good. This is one of my husband's favorite varieties. Okay, last row of tomatoes. 
I have one Paul Robeson plant right here and it is done for. I just need to pick that last tomato. And then I have three pineapple tomatoes. And these are pretty good too. Um, they're not my favorite because I tend to like um, more acidic tomatoes. But these are super sweet, super mild, um, almost a fruity flavor. So if you're into that kind of tomato, you would love the pineapple tomato. Some pretty nice ones down here. And then we get to our black creme. Again, another dark tomato. Um, like I said, the, the black creme is pretty mild, but I find that it's more prolific than a lot of the tomatoes that I have grown. And then last but not least, Juliet. Still cranking out blooms. <laughs> this thing will just go and go and go. Um, it is very sick right now, but um, I've got several red tomatoes on here that need picked. These tomatoes um, can be used for a lot of things. They can be used for making sauce because they are kind of like a, a mini Roma tomato. So they're very meaty and make a good sauce or I just like to eat them fresh. Delicious. I have one last thing that I want to do before we go up to the house to weigh the big tomatoes. I am going to try one of these peppers. Now, these peppers have a little bit of a backstory. I grew these last year. Um, the seeds that I saved were from a hybrid plant that was called Fulju Jalapeno, and it's a jalapeno without the heat. And since it's a hybrid, since it was a hybrid plant last year and I saved seeds and grew them, this could have reverted back to a parent plant, which means it might be hot and it might not be. I don't know what I'm going to get. So, and I'm very sensitive to spicy food. So I thought, hey, what the heck, let's just try this on camera and <laughs> see what happens. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous about this. I hope that this does not set me on fire. Oh shit. So far so good. I didn't really get to any of the seeds though. That's usually where most of the heat is. take another bite here. I actually got to the seeds that time. It's not hot at all. Well, that was anticlimactic, but it's a good pepper. So I think the other peppers that are on that plant, um, I'm going to let them get red. So that way I can be sure that the seeds inside of those are completely ripe. And I'm going to save the seeds again. I ran out of daylight, but I have a lot of tomatoes to carry up to the house. And once we get up there, we will weigh the big ones and see what we got. Okay, we're back in the house and I want to weigh both of these largest tomatoes that I picked tonight. We have a Chef's Choice Buy Collar right here. And this one is the triple crop. This one is the largest one. Now, I don't really think that we're going to hit the two pound mark with either one of these. Um, the biggest tomato that I ever grew was a little over two pounds. And it was a Cherokee Purple, but it was from a faciated blossom that means that there were like whenever it flowered 
um, there was like a whole bunch of little flowers fused together and what a tomato looks like whenever that happens is kind of like this one this is an Aunt Ruby's German Green but you can see it's got like several little tomatoes and a big one right here and it's not pretty but that is usually how the biggest tomatoes happen so when like some people will pull those fused blossoms off because it's going to be something that um, is not really that usable. I mean you can use part of the tomato but a lot of it is going to have to be cut away. But I never take those off because I know that it could potentially be a two pound tomato. But both of these tomatoes here are perfect ones. Like they didn't come from a fuse blossom. They are just beautiful. And we have a Chef's Choice Bicolor and the Triple Crop, which is the biggest one. Now, I do think that that green tomato that I showed you earlier that was on the Chef's Choice Bicolor plant, I think that I am going to be really close to two pounds on that one whenever it gets ripe. So you'll have to stay tuned for that one because I'm not picking it until it starts to blush. So let's start out with this Chef's Choice Bicolor and see what we have on this one. All right, we're just a little over a pound on that one. And that is a gorgeous tomato, very big. I mean, whenever you think that that right there is about a pound, and then think about what a two pound tomato would be. That's like, holy crap. I'm really excited to taste this one. All right, now let's move on to the triple crop. This big boy. I mean, that is a beautiful tomato. Okay, we're just under a pound and a half on that one. I am still really happy with these tomatoes just because they are so nice and perfect and I mean this one does have a little splitting right there but still gorgeous nonetheless look at those pink streaks right there they both have belly buttons look at that <laughs> all right so my whole kitchen is full of tomatoes right now and I'm going to have to figure out something to do with them. So I am going to wrap this up here and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time here on the Wilson Homestead. Bye guys. I finally got to pick the largest tomato out of my garden. This is a Chef's Choice Bicolor. This is the biggest one this year. So let's weigh it and see what we have here. Almost two pounds. I would have been way happier if I would have hit the two pound mark, but you can't get it every year, so. But that is a monster tomato right there and it's going to be really tasty, so I am happy with it.